click, click. Hello everyone, this is Taki from BigHeadTalker.com and I'm coming to you here from Confederation Park, just near my house. And thank you, Camera Girl, for pressing the start or the shutter button on the Fujifilm X100F. I'm still testing that as a on a tripod video camera and on top I have the uh, Rode Video Micro with the adapter from 3.5 to 2.5 mil adapter and so that's how I'm getting this pretty decent audio so thank you again camera girl you can now relax um, I am here to do a it's kind of nostalgia in that almost one year from today so today is uh, July 11th 2017 I think it's the 11th yes July 11th 2017 July 15th or 14th uh, depending on what time zone you were but I think officially D July 15th 2016 was the announcement of the Fujifilm X-T2 and it was quite a, a groundbreaking camera for Fujifilm in that it's uh, for me at least anyways it's got to the point where um, everything was refined uh, where those that were shooting Canon, Nikon or any kind of a DSLR were seriously considering to switch over to Fujifilm because they knew that the ecosystem was there. Uh, the lenses were there. Um, the bodies was almost there with the X-Pro2, but a lot of people wanted the uh, DSLR form factor. So last year, about a year ago today, this came out. And um, a few months before that, so January 15th of 2016, the X-Pro2 came out. And when this came out, it was a huge leap from the second generation, uh, or was it third generation? Uh, anyways, from the X-Pro1 was a big leap to the X-Pro2, but even from the X-T1, the X-T10, the X-E2, the X100T, from that generation sensor and processor jumping over to this newer uh, sensor, 24 megapixel uh, X-Trans with the X-Processor Pro, there was a big jump, but then six, seven months later, this was announced, and since then, uh, not only for myself, but for a lot of photographers, they've been going back and forth of which would they rather have, which would they rather shoot with the X-Pro2, the X-T2. And so I thought uh, it would be a, a good uh, review for me to do a quick review. I say quick, but we'll see how long I can keep this video. But a review of uh, the pros and cons of either or and which one I finally will pick as a uh, regular uh, EDC for shooting series photography. So technically, I guess not really an EDC, but which camera will I choose to shoot with uh, for my work, for my video, for my photography uh, between these two cameras. Now, this is a long-term test. I didn't shoot with these with, for a week or two. For those of you who know, uh, I had the pre-production model of the X-Pro2 and I was even asked by Fujifilm uh, filling out questionnaires, talking to uh, various ones at Fujifilm Canada to forward my um, ideas about what the X-Pro2 should be like. So I did sort of help develop this to a certain extent and as well as the X-T2, I had a pre-production model of this. So I've been shooting with this for over a year and a half and I've been shooting with this for over a year because I did have the uh, pre-production model about a month before it was released. Uh, this is the graphite silver version of this camera anyways, but uh, I had a long time to shoot with it so um, you could take what I say with a grain of salt but I, I have uh, had an opportunity to shoot both of these for long enough to have a good idea so let's go over some of the the specs first so as I already uh, mentioned January 2016 this was released July 2016 this was released um, currently right now uh, July 2017 b and has the X-Pro2 body only for $1,700 or the body only for the X-T2, so not the graphite silver, but the X-T2 is $1,600. So there's a $100 price difference, meaning this X-Pro2 is $100 more expensive than the X-T2. Um, the X-Pro2 bundled with, the, with this lens, the XF23 F2, is $1,850. So you're basically paying $250 for this lens, which is a smoking deal if this is the lens that you want. Or you can get the graphite, the X-Pro2 graphite kit, which includes the special edition graphite version of the XF23 F2, which is cool, 
but I don't think you can buy the lens in graphite separate from the body. And that kit is $2,300 for the X-Pro2 graphite with the lens. And with the X-T2, uh, as I mentioned before, $1,600 body only. X-T2 with the battery grip right now is on sale for $1,700. So you're only paying $100 for the battery grip. And the so this model here, the graphite silver X-T2 body only is $1,800. So I'm rattling off all these numbers and prices, but basically what's happening is if you want body only, uh, you can get the X-T2 with the battery grip for the same price, $1,700 as an X-Pro2, same price. And for many, including myself, I understand that the X-Pro2 officially is the flagship body, but since this was released first and this came out seven months, six months later, um, this had a lot more even firmer features added to it that the X-Pro2 had to play catch up uh, months later, almost a year later to play catch up to the X-T2. So in terms of spec per spec, this uh, as at the time of release was higher spec and even now there's a lot of features on this is higher spec than the X-Pro2. So let's kind of go over, um, I have notes on my iPad which just went screen dead there, there you go. So I have notes. And the first section really is, uh, what is the advantage of the X-Pro2 over the X-T2? And I have basically three, and depending on how much these three things mean to you, will depend on if you decide on the X-Pro2 or the X-T2, which is the uh, X-Pro2 has a range finder uh, design and layout. So it comes down to uh, the aesthetics, right? Do you like shooting on the left side of the uh, camera? Because Pretty much every rangefinder that I know of is on the far left top corner. And so this is how you shoot. I'm left eye dominant. I struggle shooting right eye dominant. But if you are right eye dominant and you shoot film and you're used to shooting rangefinder style, you'll feel very much at home with this camera shooting like this. And because of all the controls, most of the controls are over to the far right side. Uh, it has a really nice ergonomic feel for those that like to shoot rangefinder style. And it's not just rangefinder style, but you do have that hybrid uh, optical viewfinder and electronic viewfinder in here. And if that is a big deal to you, uh, then you don't have a choice. It's either this or the X100F or any of the X100s or you go to the original X-Pro1. But this is like the top of the line currently available X-Pro2. So that's um, one of them. The second thing is it's a very stealth camera. I mean, it looks very simple. From the front, you can see on the X-T2, it actually says Fujifilm on the front there. On the X-Pro2, there's absolutely nothing. It has it on the top here. I even wish that it didn't have it on the top. And if it did, I wish it was black on black to make it even more stealth. But this is what it looks like in the front. Uh, it looks way more like a film camera. Um, when I have the X-T2, I have less people coming up to me asking me questions about the camera. Just like if I have the X100F versus having an X-T20. With the X-Pro2 or the X100F, people always come up thinking it's a film camera or they're really interested in the aesthetics of it. So it, it's stealth in one sense, but in another sense it attracts attention. So it's kind of, um, uh, what am I saying here? I don't really know what I'm saying, but uh, I just like the all black. I like the lines of it. And if aesthetics, uh, the form of a camera is important to you, and it should be, right? Like, it's hard to shoot with a really ugly looking camera, and that might sound superficial, but you know, if the original X100 uh, came out, as I mentioned, if it came out looking like a Sony or a Samsung, it wouldn't have done, it would not have done as well as uh, the original X100 coming out looking like an old school film camera with film camera style ergonomics. And so, uh, the stealthness of it, as well as the design is important, so that's number two, stealth. And, um, well, you know what, actually I kind of incorporated it all, which is number three. So I put rangefinder design and layout, stealth, and number three is hybrid OVF EVF viewfinder. So those are the three things that are standout about this that you're just not going to get on the X-T2. Although the um, uh, stealthness, I mean, you can make this more stealth if you want, I guess. Uh, so that's the only real major advantage of shooting with the X-Pro2. Now, let's move on to the X-T2. Uh, 
Uh, again, this is the graphite silver version. This is not the standard version, but uh, I have to give this back soon. So I thought I would just kind of play around with this a little bit longer. But let's go over the the XT2 Pros that it has over the X Pro 2. Um, larger and faster EVF. So it uh, this has a 0.77 times magnification EVF. The X Pro 2 has a 0.6 times. So it's quite a bit larger. As soon as you look through it, you know right away uh, you can sense the larger EVF on this. But as well as that, um, when you're in the the boost mode I think that's what it's called um, this has the 100 frames uh, per second refresh rate so when you're looking through here and you're in boost mode you can really sense that the refresh rate is really fast uh, this one here is still pretty fast it's 85 frames per second but it's not as fast as the X100 uh, sorry the XT2 and a lot of people even say that the human eye um, refreshes I don't know how they know this but they say the human eye refreshes at about hundred frames per second so this is pretty much equal to how our eye sees images as a in terms of uh, FPS I guess so that's uh, one of the uh, advantages uh, larger and faster EVF um, the XT2 has a articulating screen which actually articulates two ways it articulates this way for shooting vertically and articulates like the normal way which is straight down this way or angled down this way now I do wish that this was touch screen the GFX has it I'm sure that the next iteration of this will have touch but uh, oftentimes you know I didn't think I would use it that much but when you're shooting down low or up high it really is advantageous to have an articulating screen um, some guys only shoot with the EVF and that's fantastic or an OVF that's fantastic but this have the having the option of articulating is great uh, this has a, a dedicated and locking ISO button here. Okay, so on the left side, you do have to go to the left side with the X Pro 2, everything is over on this side. It has the dual shutter speed and the um, shutter speed and ISO built in. It's a little bit hard to see, aesthetically it's pleasing, but oftentimes what people do is they actually just look on their, uh, look through their EVF or they look on their LCD screen to see what ISO they're at. This thing here, camera turned off, is very easy to see uh, what ISO you're at and it's separated from the shutter speed dial so you can you know control it separately and I like that and both of these are locking which is fantastic. Um, ergonomic wise um, it's way more ergonomic. I know some guys claim that the X Pro 2 is more ergonomic than the X-T2 and ergonomics can be somewhat subjective but there's no way. Uh, one of the things about the X Pro 2 I really don't like is the AFL button is on this hump. When you're shooting with it like this it's fine but as soon as you want to press the AFL most people want to press this button the AEL button and this is switchable in in the custom function but even then it's a bit of a reach to reach over to the AEL button to use it as an AFL button the X Pro 2 um, it is a little bit inset and again they have it reverse more people want AFL versus AEL they want the autofocus lock not auto exposure lock and so this should be switched and it's a little bit too flush for me I wish it, the buttons were bigger more prominent but it's an easy reach right you can reach both of them without having to readjust your grip so that in terms of ergonomics is better this uses the more of a rubbery type of grip the X100 series and the X Pro series has kind of a slipperier it seems like they're trying to imitate leather but it doesn't feel like leather and it feels slipperier and so um, if I uh, there are some kits people can convert this over to real leather if they wanted to like a, like a custom job And I wish Fujifilm would even offer a custom leather, leather kit even in various colors when this look great in a nice brown or cognac leather or nice hunter green kind of a color, but uh, this just feels slippery and you probably would want a, a grip attachment on here to get more grip but this thing already has a decent grip with the vertical uh, battery grip you get even more of a gussied up grip but overall the ergonomics on this is better the button placements are better um, just overall it just feels much better in the hand memory card the both uh, the X Pro 2 and the XE2 have uh, double SD card slots however the X uh, Pro 2 only has a single ultra high speed or UHS type 2 in the first lot and the second one is the UHS type 1 where the XT2 has double slots uh, ultra high speed slot 2's and so shooting uh, 4k video shooting continuous uh, 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 shooting a lot of that has to do with the buffer as well but you just have way more speed on the XT2 with that UHS uh, 2 type on both slots 
Um, the X-T2 has a slightly better, more customizable autofocus system. Um, over a few firmware updates, the X-Pro2 has slowly caught up, but the X-T2 uh, specifically, the um, customizable autofocus continuous features where you can customize how the continuous focus tracks subjects, um, either if it's sports or randomly moving subjects, it is in here. Now for me, I shoot single point center and I don't like to shoot continuous. Uh, if you shoot sports, if you shoot anything that's uh, fast action um, and things that are coming quickly at you, I can see why that makes a difference. It doesn't make a huge difference to me, but if AF is important to you, then again, this is the camera to go with because of that customizable autofocus continuous, much like the Canons have. This is a big feature for me and kind of you, you guys already know kind of my bias towards the X-T2 is really the video features on the X-T2. Uh, uh, one of the things very simple is it has the the, the larger 3.5 millimeter uh, microphone plug-in where the X, all the other Fuji films uses, other than the GFX, they all use the smaller 2.5 uh, millimeter which is way too small you always need that 2.5 to 3.5 millimeter adapter which I'm using on the X100F um, so it has the the proper size uh, with the vertical grip which is really important if you do want to use this as a video camera um, not only do you get two extra batteries but you also get video monitoring uh, so you can plug in headphones and make sure that your audio levels are good as well it extends your 4k video from uh, 10 minutes to 30 minutes uh, you also got the boost mode you have all the features uh, well I'm kind of going into uh, the, the fact that it has a grip but you know you get all the repeated buttons here you get everything down here if you shoot a lot of vertical but for video uh, just having the extra batteries having the 30 minute 4k video uh, all those things are great I mean the X Pro 2 can shoot 4k and I think because the X-T20 has 4k they can put it in here but they'll have to do line skipping which is the biggest difference between the X-T20 and the X-T2 for 4k video which is the X-T20 has line skipping so they could probably put line skipping 4k on the X-Pro2 but they have not yet done so it has the ability to output uh, 422 8-bit uh, HDMI output uh, via um, uh, onto an external um, recorder and be able to uh, have the uh, log output. So it's kind of like raw for video and that way you retain way more detail and you can really uh, shoot in a flat profile and do a lot of post and kind of make the videos much nicer instead of just using whatever's coming out of the camera. But even without F-Log, um, you're getting 100 megabits per second uh, video rate versus 36 or 38 on the X-Pro2 when you're shooting even in 1080p, uh, 60 frames per second. So you, you have a lot more detail on this video. And so this video wise is definitely superior to the X-Pro2. So if video is important to you, um, then the X-T2 is probably the choice for you. And finally, as I already got into uh, the optional battery grip, which the X-Pro2, I knew they wouldn't do it because of the aesthetics, the rangefinder aesthetics, it would look a little bit ugly. This is kind of their classic design, like the X100F, it's a classic designed camera. The aesthetics are important, the form factor is important. So they have a grip for it, but not a battery grip on here. Uh, this one, once it has it, uh, has a grip on it just looks like a monster it's ready to work it's ready to get things done and uh, that is a great ex especially having three batteries right now there are some small issues with the battery grip one of them being that each battery is drained separately and when one battery drains and you're in video mode what happens is the video actually stops so Fujifilm that is a firmware fix that you should fix as well um, this affects both the X-Pro2 and the X-T2 when you use a remote control to start and stop video which is really important for guys like me like I use camera girl to set the focus and press start for me um, but uh, for this uh, all the Fujifilms the app when you start and stop the video it limits the video to 720p which doesn't make a lot of sense to me. So Fujifilm, if you can make uh, the video, the app, the remote app, just as a remote control to start and stop video, forget about it being able to transfer to your smartphone, but just as a remote control, I think that's uh, really important. And the final thing about video is, with the X-Pro2, you need to use a shutter button to start and stop. Uh, I'm sorry, you can't use a shutter button. You have to use this custom function button, which isn't horrible. It's pretty decent size. Uh, the X-T20, the X-100F, and the X-T2 all start and stop video using the shutter button, which makes a lot more sense. And so hopefully that is actually just a firmware update for the X-Pro2. 
So that's like the major differences and the major pros and cons. As you can see, most of the pros go to the X-T2 based on functionality, in terms of ergonomics, in terms of uh, technology and performance. Uh, but uh, if you are primarily a, a still shooter, so I mean, this is kind of my conclusion here. If you look at these two, if you primarily like shooting primes, you don't shoot video, um, the X-Pro2 is fantastic. In fact, the 23 F2 on the X-Pro2, because this is the WR lens, a great focal length, the 35 mil equivalent. And with this rangefinder viewfinder, the 23 mil viewfinder lines are fantastic. It's about where you'd want it. You have enough outside the frame lines that you can see what's coming in and out of your frame. And that's, that's a great um, a feature. As well, if you are shooting continuous, which isn't something that's this is gonna be great at, but in optical viewfinder, you don't get the screen blank out where you will get that on the EVF and so that's a big advantage but if you want to shoot zooms so right here I have my favorite zoom uh, for the style that I like to shoot which is the uh, XF 10 to 24 this works much better on the on the uh, XT2 because first of all in OVF mode you can't go wider than I think 20 let me just press this button here um, you can't let me just see here. Yeah, you, I don't think you can go wider than 28 with the frame lines on here. Maybe it's 24, but I'm sure it's 20, uh, 28 mil equivalent. So you can't go wider than the 18 mil. After that, you have to rely on the EVF anyways. And as well, if you're using like the bigger zooms, like the, the 50 to 140, again, you're gonna switch over to the electronic viewfinder because the view is gonna be so tiny. There's no pleasure in viewing. 140 with with this uh, with this uh, optical viewfinder. You want to switch over the EVF. So if you're always switching over the EVF, you've just negated the primary reason why you're pretty much buying this, other than the ergonomics and the aesthetics of this camera. And so uh, zoom lenses, either ultra wide or telephoto XT2 is fantastic. The primes, still shooter, stealth shooter. Uh, this is the way to go. The X uh, X Pro 2 is fantastic. And so uh, my conclusion is this, um, having more features, is that make it better? Well, no, because if there are features that you won't use, like you won't use video, you don't like articulating screen, you will never buy the vertical grip, um, you are like me, you don't use continuous autofocus, you pretty much do single focus, or you have an adapter on here and you're putting M-mount or Zeiss lenses on here, so you're manually focusing anyways, you know, a lot of the extra features on here are lost if you're not gonna use it. In terms of ergonomics versus aesthetics, is that important? important um, yeah because form factor is important a lot of people when they shoot with certain cameras it comes down to the form factor so even the fact that this thing feels like a rangefinder camera is it makes a big deal to a lot of uh, film photographers that are migrating over to digital and they want a camera that still feels like it's film but it's shooting digital and for that reason um, the X Pro 2 is a fantastic camera to uh, to to choose to shoot digitally um, the biggest advantage again is the hybrid OVF EVF uh, and it works great with Prime so that's the X-Pro2 and the biggest advantage for me the X-T2 is it's way more versatile right you can shoot sports with it uh, you can shoot video with it it has the optional grip so you can do a lot more with this so this is more of a jack-of-all-trades uh, camera it'll appeal to a wider audience and so when this came out obviously this was sold out for the longest time uh, because it was cheaper than the X-Pro2 and yet it seemed to have not seemed to have it actually had more features and so uh, that's my long-term conclusion guys I love the X Pro 2 but I think the XE2 is better for me and so I am going to return both of these cameras uh, back to Fujifilm Canada but uh, for my regular use I think really the XE2 is for me but let me know down below what you guys like about either the X-T2 or the X-Pro2 which one like why do you want like one over the other if I've missed anything I know there's small things like continuous uh, how many frames per second continuous you can shoot with this like you can shoot 14 frames per second versus I think 10 in, in, in electronic um, uh, shutter mode and the buffer is bigger on this I mean there's other smaller differences but I think it kind of went over the major uh, differences and so uh, that's it guys uh, don't forget to like especially because camera girl uh, press start and she's standing right camera girl do you want to come in no she doesn't want to come in this time but thanks uh, camera girl for helping me on this video um, again I'm using the X100F 
it's not known for its video capabilities, but I really like the 23 f2 lens for video, which is the 35 mil equivalent. If you're shooting yourself, I'm about four feet away from the lens and using the video micro, if you have a strong enough voice, you don't need to use a lav mic as you can probably hear. And so if you are a YouTuber doing these kind of videos and you're not running and gunning, the X100F is actually doable to shoot videos like this. And if I wanna shoot super compact and super light, it would be a choice between the X100F or the X-T20 which is gonna be my next comparison video. And so thanks for watching and happy shooting.